It's certainly concerning, especially in the EU, to see some of the most populated countries in Europe, as well as some of the biggest economies, say they're going to pause the use of this AstraZeneca vaccine over these concerns of blood clots. So you're a researcher that's obviously very well versed in this. Is there any direct link between that AstraZeneca vaccine and the blood clots in certain individuals? No, there's no uh, obvious link between the AstraZeneca vaccine and uh, blood clots. And I think we have to put the problem into perspective. About uh, 5 million individuals in Europe have received the AstraZeneca vaccine, and there have been reports of about 30 individuals with blood clots. We would estimate that in 5 million individuals with COVID-19, about at least 100,000 would develop blood clots. So the vaccine uh, reduces blood clots by over 99%. And it's thinking like that, which led ISDH and other organizations to urge the ongoing administration of the AstraZeneca and other vaccines to reduce the burden of COVID-19. So, Dr. Weitz, I know you didn't go to medical school for me to call you Jeff. Uh, Dr. Weitz, if all these different countries are seeing evidence of it and you see a lot of backlash to it, is there any reason why they just shouldn't switch to a different vaccine? I mean, if people are hesitant and we want to see people vaccinated, why not switch if people have these concerns, whether they're just real or perceived? Right. Well, it would be fine if we had lots of the other vaccines, but we don't. And countries are depending on the AstraZeneca vaccine as part of their fight against COVID-19. And remember that the AstraZeneca vaccine has the advantage that it just needs refrigeration, whereas the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine require storage at in a freezer. So the AstraZeneca vaccine is much easier to administer in pharmacies and doctor's offices. So there's a need for multiple tools to get the burden of COVID-19 under control. So I understand there's only a small number of these incidents of blood clot situations, but even those small numbers, isn't that a reason for concern? Is there anything that can be done perhaps after the vaccine is taken to reduce that risk? Well, I think awareness of the signs and symptoms of blood clots is important so that should individuals develop any of those signs or symptoms, they can seek medical attention promptly and get appropriate treatment. And just for people watching, um, one of the issues here is thrombosis with the vaccine. Can you kind of explain what that is and what are the longer term dangers? Yeah, thrombosis means abnormal blood clot formation, which can occur in the veins or the arteries. And with COVID-19, it more commonly occurs in the veins, and it can lead to uh, deep vein thrombosis, a clot in the legs that can lead to a clot in the lungs. And most of these, if they're diagnosed early, can be easily treated, and the risk of recurrence is, is low. So the most important thing is to be aware of the symptoms and signs of thrombosis and to seek attention should any of those develop. But the, the benefits of the vaccines far outweigh any of the risks, including this rare event of clot formation, which is probably related to the underlying disease and not to the vaccine itself. So we know that uh, the safety committee over in the EU is going to review this information today, and they're going to have an extraordinary meeting, what they call an extraordinary meeting on Thursday. Before we let you go, what are you expecting from that meeting? I expect that they'll review the data, look at the rare number of events, and come to the same conclusions that we should continue vaccinating people to reduce the burden from COVID-19, and that uh, these events are not directly related to the to the to the vaccine. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.